All right, you beautiful people, welcome back. So in the last video, we learned how to create this text field and whenever we enter anything in this text field and click on the show button, it's gonna print it out in our Python console or in the console where we are running our Python file. In this video, what we are gonna do is whenever we click on the show button, instead of printing it out in our console, we want to display a dialog box which contains our username. So in this video, we'll basically be learning how to create that dialog box and how to add different elements like button in it, title in it, and all those other cool things so creating a dialog box is really really easy just like we create a button we first need to import it so i'm just going to write from kiwi md and then uix dot dialog and we are just going to import empty dialog from here and then we need to create a dialog and in our dialog we are going to print this self dot username dot text so we are going to create our dialog inside this def show underscore data method to create a dialog we first create a variable you can call this variable whatever you want i'm just going to call it dialog and then inside this, we are going to use our empty dialog functionality. And this will require a text parameter as to what do you want to display inside our dialog box. And we just want to display our username. So I'm just going to cut this and paste this over here. Let's remove our extra print line. So now we have created our dialog, but we still need to show it on our screen. So to show it on the screen, we just write dialog.open and this will pop up our dialog whenever our button is clicked. So now let's reload it and see how it looks. So now we can just enter anything over here. Let's enter build with uh, Python and click on the show button and you'll be able to see that this build with Python appears over here. Now let's also give it a title of uh, something like username check. So giving a title is also very easy. You just write title equal to and inside single quotes or double quotes, you can just give it a title. I'm just gonna call this title as username check as to like maybe this is a login screen and basically we are checking whether a username is valid or not. So now we're gonna click on uh, the show button. As you can see, there is a title of username check over here. Now there is a problem. What if we decrease our screen? You can see when we decrease our screen, this dialog box goes out of the screen. So on our mobile phone, it will look somewhat like this, which is not very nice. So what we want to do is as we decrease our size of the screen, this dialog box should also decrease in size. And when you want this kind of functionality, we use our size underscore hint. So here I'm just gonna put in a comma and go to new line and I'm just gonna write size underscore hint equal to and requires a tuple. And what we are gonna do is in the X axis, I want it to be half. So I'm just gonna put this in 0.5 and you can think of these decimals like 0.5 as 50%. That is we want this dialog box to acquire 50% of our screen by multiplying 0.5 by 100. And uh, let's give it a Y of one. We don't want to change the Y, so let it remain to Y. So let it remain to one. And now let's uh, let's type something over here, click on show. You can see it requires or it acquires the 50% of our screen. And when we decrease it this time, you can see our dialog box is totally responsive and it's decreasing with the decrease of the size of our screen. So this application can work on an iPad, on a desktop, also on a mobile application, which is one of the functions of Kiwi MD and Kiwi that you can create the application once and then use it anywhere. So now we have added a little bit of responsiveness over here, but it's still not looking good. So let me just increase this from 0.5 to maybe 0.7 and let's reload it. And now let's see how it looks. So let's write root show and it's looking a little bit better. And let's actually see how it will look on our mobile phone. And as you can see, it looks perfect on our mobile phone. And now we need to add some buttons over here to make it more spicy. So buttons, adding buttons is really, really easy. Just like we add buttons normally over here, we can also add buttons inside our dialog box. How do you do that? So first we need to add a couple of buttons. So we can also use this MD rectangle flat button, but just to add another kind of button in our application, I'm gonna add a MD flat button. And now what we are gonna do inside our show data method, I'm just gonna create two buttons, that is the close button. So right now there's no way to close our dialog box. We can just click around multiple times, but nothing happens. And maybe it closes sometimes, but mostly it doesn't. So we're gonna create a close button over here and clicking on it, it will remove this dialog box. So first we are gonna write our close button code. And just like we have created all the buttons, I'm just gonna write MD flat button and I'm just gonna give it a text of uh, close. And similarly, just for the sake of this example, create another button and let's just call it more underscore button. And instead of close, we are gonna give it a text of more. And then to add these buttons inside our dialog box, we are gonna add another parameter over here. Let's put a comma. And this parameter is simply known as buttons. So this is a parameter inside our dialog variable or this empty dialog functionality. 
So now it requires a parameter of buttons if you want to add buttons and this is basically a list. So for a list we always put square brackets and square brackets requires some values. So we are going to just put in these buttons inside our button list. So I'm just going to add our close button over here and put a comma and then add our more underscore button. And that's pretty much it to be honest. So let's reload it and see how it looks. So now let's just enter any kind of uh, thing over here, click on show. And now we have two close buttons, uh, one close button and one more button and they are looking pretty good. But clicking on this close button doesn't really do anything. So let's actually add the functionality where clicking on this close button actually closes this dialog box. So what we are going to do is we're just going to add a on release method over here. We have already discussed this in the last video. So on release is just on underscore release and we're just going to call another method over here. And let's just call this method as a closed underscore dialog. And we are going to create this dialog close underscore dialog method now. So over here, we're just going to write def close underscore dialog and a method takes two arguments first is self and the second is obj the kvmd requires that just like it did with show underscore data and then to close the dialog we first need to reference this dialog variable now how do we reference a variable of another method take a guess we just added a self over here so we're just gonna write self dot dialog box and then we need to copy this and paste this over here also because now we are referencing it with self dot dialog and now we can use this self dot dialog inside our close underscore dialog so we're just going to write self dot dialog dot dismiss and this will just close our dialog box so now let's format everything properly so it looks good and let's reload it and now we are just going to put in some random values click on show and now if we click this close button as you can see it closes our dialog box so this is looking pretty cool let's actually minimize it and see how it looks on our mobile phone click on show close all right so this is looking pretty good now one of the problems over here is that if we remove our username and click on show it will still show our pop-up box but there's nothing over here so let's write an if else condition which actually checks whether a username has been entered or not so what we are gonna do is uh, let's just write a if else condition inside this show underscore data method so for example we can just write if the username that we have entered and the username that we have entered is stored in self.username.txt so if self.username.txt is empty what do we need to do if it's empty so we're just going to create a variable of check uh, let's say check string and we are just going to equal it to let's say username has not been or let's actually make it a little bit more formal please uh, enter a username make it nice and then uh, if this uh, username text is uh, false so we need a false conditions so let's just write else what if uh, a username has been entered then we can use this check underscore string again and we can make it equal to so let's use our uh, what we have entered the text over here let's just paste it and along with that we are just gonna add let's just say does not exist so let's uh, have a recap of what our code is actually doing so first when our show button is clicked it's gonna go to our show underscore data so it's gonna go to show underscore data and then it will check whether the username has been entered or not if a username has not been entered then the check underscore string will be saving this string of please enter a username but if the self dot username dot text is not empty then it will store our username and does not exist this is just an example of login form so now we have to actually display this check underscore string in our dialog so we can just copy this and instead of this text we can just paste this over here and then we are creating our close and more buttons and adding them inside our dialog box and then we are opening our dialog box and when we press our close button we are basically closing our dialog box so let's run it finally and let's make sure that everything is working properly so now we have opened up our uh, box and we can just write something over here let's try it root and click on show it says root does not exist now we can close this and let's say we haven't entered anything over here and just just click on show so now it will say please enter a username all right guys this was pretty much it for this video in the next video we are gonna learn about something known as a list now lists are very very useful and we'll be using them a lot in the next and the future videos so i'll see you over there